and I continue to bring it up, and I will continue to bring it up. Otani and him are the same age. So again, it's not like Otani's 22. But also, Mm -hmm. Otani's not pitching. So I don't give a shit. Otani is a fantastic player. Otani is not the best player in the world right now. The Next thing year, that makes he probably him the best, be, but not this year. Yeah, exactly. The thing that makes him the best player in the world is the fact he can do something that no one else can. He's essentially Babe Ruth. He can pitch and he can hit. And he, he not just pitch. He's one of the best pitchers in baseball. Not just hit. He's one of the best hitters in baseball, man. Right? Yeah. So when he's doing that, absolutely. You have a hundred percent every right to believe he is the best. But I'm sorry, Dodger fans. I'm sorry, Otani fans. Right now, and Ben Verlander, right now, <laughs> Otani is not the best player in baseball. Right this second, Gary, who is? It's Aaron Judge. And you know who the second best player in baseball is? It's Juan Soto. Juan Soto. Yeah. They have the two best. So that brings me to what you wanted to talk about. What's is up? this the best duo that we've ever seen in a lineup? And I would say... This is the best duo since Babe Ruth and Lou Gehrig. And I'll say this, okay. you know, today, Lou Gehrig's Lou Gehrig day, everyone wearing the four patch. Love it. It's great. You know, we're talking about the second game right now, but today they did wear it. Um, Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth, they did not go up against the competition. Aaron Judge and Juan Soto are going up against. So I, I'm sorry. I hate to be that guy. Um, but the this is some of the toughest competition that any hitters ever had to go up against. You got crazy spin rate. You got all these analytics. People know their chase rate, their whiff rate, all these analytics. Everyone has a scouting report on everybody. And yet, somehow, going up against guys that have sweeping sliders and, you know, 104 mile an hour fastballs, judges leading the league in home runs of 21. And not only that, Gary. Judge has more home runs, three more than he did at this point last year or uh, not last year, two years ago when he was on pace. uh, Well, when he actually hit 62 and Juan Soto, who right now, like you predicted before the season started that he would win the batting title is currently winning the batting title in the AL. He's only behind um, Jerickson Profar for batting average in the major leagues. And Juan Soto is in the top four in home runs. And when you think of Juan Soto, you don't think of like a guy that just hits tons of home runs, right? You think of more of a five tool player. Think of a guy that can impact the game all over the place. Um, You mentioned pure hitter, right? He's pure hitter. hitter. That exactly. And that's what he is. But I think his defense doesn't get rewarded enough. I think okay. he's gotten so much better. And his arm is deadly. I mean, we already saw him win a game this year based on his arm. Um, so I think those two, it might seem a little hyperbolic. It might seem a little knee jerk. We've only seen him play, you know, I'm play. I'm trying to be fair here. You know, we've only seen him play, what, 62 games together. But that's the best duo I've ever seen in baseball, period. That is the best duo. And if Garrett Cole was having the Cy Young season he had last year, that would be the best trio I've ever seen. Period. They're pretty good. I mean, let me say this: Can the I Yankees say this did it the right me? way. <laughs> they did it well, the right way yeah, going out. And getting side, I mean, this shit is working. But let me let me say this: this whole Aaron Judge Juan Soto because I was a little worried based on how it started. I was like, okay, it seems like we're gonna get okay. Juan Soto is the best player in baseball right now. Aaron Judge is doing nothing. It almost felt like at some point or another, Aaron Judge is going to turn it on. And then Juan Soto is kind of cooling off. You remember that? Maybe like two or three weeks ago, yeah. Juan Soto was kind of going through a thing. He was hitting ball hard, flying out to the wall. He was striking out a lot. We were just like, this is weird, right? But it's like they traded places. Now we're not at that phase. Right now, it's two players in their prime, one of which is 25 in the next 10 years of his career is prime year. So when you see Juan Soto in the Hall of Fame and you see his stats, because you will turn his baseball card around. I know a lot of people are like, what the hell is a baseball card? Because they don't turn anything around anymore. But go to baseball reference. You're going to see NYY, 
dragged down his baseball card for 15 Absolutely. years. And, and it's his going to will have an NY on it. Yeah, and it'll and it'll be stars next to every single season. And you're going to say 11-time All-Star Juan Soto, the Yankee, going into the Hall of Fame. That's what we're going to be talking about. Now, having said this, for me, the reason I give this this duo the edge over a lot of other duos is because of fit. There's a lot of there are duos that I can mention, Manny Ramirez, David Ortiz, offensively that just struck fear into major league teams. But one thing's for certain: some of them were DHs, right? Some of them were like first basemen. No, we're talking about our starting center fielder and our starting right fielder. It's, I mean, what are we talking about right now? This team, if you actually asked me last year, you asked me not just last year, seven years prior, what does this team really need? What does the what do the Yankees need? We see Aaron Judge. I see what he's great at. He's all time great. He's gonna be in the Hall of Fame as well. But what's the perfect pairing for him? It would have been a contact lefty bat. That's what anyone would have told you. We need a lefty bat that doesn't strike out, who probably does some damage power wise but based on what the yankees need they may they might not need power because like we have luke Voigt and we have all these dudes right the yankees added a dude who's a lefty contact power bat what are we talking about this is perfect you hated joey gallo signing right we traded for him you absolutely hated it such trash a lot of other people loved it and here's why he was a lefty right he was a lefty that was it he defensively, analytics said he was a, a good outfielder. I never saw that version of Joey Gallo, unfortunately, and I was rooting for the guy. But he was considered a fit because he was a lefty. It's the reason we went and traded for his ass. But let's be clear. Juan Soto is the best fit you could ever ask for. There was no other fit. There's not another player I would hand select. There's nobody. The only person that you can be like, oh, yeah, that guy would have been as good or like comparable of a fit is just throwing Shohei Otani onto the Yankees. And we're talking about again, Jake, another player that is going to be a first ticket hall of famer. It's yeah. ridiculous. The level of talent we're seeing in baseball is just silly. And, you know, obviously we're very lucky to be hosting a baseball show, watching all this talent. And it's, it's silly. And I never thought personally that Brian Cashman would have the balls to actually go ahead and pull the trigger on a trade because now in Yankee land, there's expectations before the expectation was playoff berth. Well, we got a shot. That was the expectation. How Steinbrenner said that our expectation is to have a shot. We don't have a shot now. Now we have expectations. People look at this team. They turn on yes network and they say, this team has got to get it done. They've got to actually, you've got to push all our chips to the center of the table go win a World Series because based on what we're seeing on the field, not on paper, on the field, this is a World Series championship team. And the big reason why is because of those two guys you're talking about hitting two and three. It's ridiculous how good these guys are.